south coast of England and is likely to go to a foreign buyer. In the Second World War, the harbour here at Pembroke Dock was one of the largest flying boat bases in the world. Two old crewmen feel strongly the boat should come back to its old home. This is where it ought to be. It shouldn't be at Southampton. Sunderland was the largest aircraft that the RAF operated in 1938 when it was introduced into service at RAF Pembroke Dock. In fact, Pembroke Dock was the first um, official station to operate the Sunderland, and they pioneered the Sunderland into the Royal Air Force's service. Uh, the Sunderland was here for 19 years until 1957 and wrote a tremendous chapter into this town's history and also the, the Royal Air Force as well. And uh, there was some incredible tales about the Sunderland from Pembroke Dock. Our role, uh, uh, flight boats, were, was uh, anti-submarine. We were, were sub-hunters and killers. I would say the majority, the majority of the work down here at wartime was definitely based in the anti-submarine. Oh, and yeah. they got a few. Oh, yeah. There was a big panic <laughs> when you saw it. And the next thing you know, that they're lining up to go into attack. And you've got to attack in a certain way. You can't just go head into it. You've got to line it up and go into attack, otherwise the pilot who used to drop the uh, depth charges wouldn't stand a chance. Afterwards? Well, I don't know. I think you, you sort of thought about it afterwards. I mean, the poor so-and-so's down there. I mean, they could have hit us as well as we could have hit them. Did you ever get hit? We did have a nasty yeah. moment in flight boats when uh, the Germans decided that it might be a good idea uh, not to dive when we were being received by an aircraft, but to come up uh, with a, a machine gun aircraft. <laughs> yeah, but they weren't, they weren't ordinary machine guns. They were like what the Navy called Chicago pianos. Yes. They were on the, after the conning tower, and there was nine of them. Yeah. And they could shovel up some, as you can imagine. Yeah. What about aircraft? Did you ever get attacked by any aircraft? <laughs> That's the most unbiased part of the whole game. That's the worst part, really. Yeah. Get you 88 on your tail. Yeah. What's that like? And, uh, nasty. Squeeze very deeply. <laughs> nasty. <laughs> and they didn't come in ones, though. They were no. usually twos and threes. Twos and threes. How did you know they were coming for you? Look for the nearest cloud. Look, yeah. that's it. Look for the nearest cloud and dive in. Don't worry about shooting them down, because they'd beat you to it. Yeah. Mind you, could take reasonably good care of yourself. This place hasn't changed much since the war, you think? No. no same no. impression as I had first of entering a prison. <laughs> <laughs> like a prison camp. Yes. Like a prison camp. This yes. was the guard room. And this was your first check-in. And this was actually the only way in and the only way out of this dock. So the, the, the police were here behind you, checking every yes. pass? They check everybody as we pass. <laughs> and this yes. room... We were walking towards the officer's mess. The yeah. sick bay was on the right chair, I think, wasn't it? Eh? The sick no, bay? The sick bay is a bit further up. Yeah. That was the tailor shop. Tailor shop over there. Yeah. All shop. these bars on the windows now. Yeah. The bars are still on the windows. Oh, Tell me, Bob, does it still feel uh, something special when you walk up this way now? I mean, it's changed a lot. Oh, yes. And the, yes. But the trees it's are still here, the, still the yeah. avenue. It seems a, a, dere a little bit derelict, but mm. still you have the same atmosphere as the bus. The old station. It's terrible yeah. to see the, the, the blank empty space yeah, where the, the mess is. It was such a lovely building. What do you think of this area now? Shambles. <laughs> yeah. You know, they've, they've, in a way, it was a wonderful dockyard as such when the government admiralty had it. And now it's, it's totally, well, you can see that there's still some of the old buildings standing, but uh, this place been spoiled really, as we knew it, as we yeah. knew it.
Now this part of the Hayden is being turned into a deep water port. At the height of the war, up to 100 flying boats were based here. They were serviced by more than 1,500 airmen and technicians. There's just people working on the aircraft. I mean, such as refueling, bombing up, uh, armour changing and cleaning guns, uh, filling up with all the ammo, and uh, a general sort of overhaul. Mm. And then the air crews would go out after that, when we were, say, hours before we were flying, and they'd done what they call a daily inspection. In other words, you weren't literally checking everything that they'd done, but you were satisfying yourself stuff you were working with was working properly. How do you think you'll feel when you see the Sunderland in Southampton? Well, I think Bob and I'll be the same. We're having nostalgia. And uh, obviously we would like to see it in its wartime uh, capacity rather than now as it is probably more in a civilian role. I don't think I'll mind a bit. It'll be just lovely to see it. No, it'd be nice to see it anyway. Wishing will Just keep on wishing, and care will go. Dreamers tell us dreams come true. That's no mistake. Wishing are the dreams we dream when we're away. That's a soft song. Flying Sunderland is up for sale here in Southampton. It bowed out of active service in 1946, having served from Pembroke Dock with Squadron 201. It was later converted for luxury passenger use. Now, the owner, business tycoon Edward Holton, wants £1 million for it. Enthusiasts reckon the boat will probably go abroad, so Bob and Trevor and a few other old crew members have come to say goodbye. <laughs> well, at this occasion, I think, though, we couldn't get off the wharf in Hong Kong because of the, the barnacles yeah, on the Yeah, I know, yeah. And we've got to get some about 800 gallons of fuel to get off. Right there. Forget that one. Uh -huh. uh, you still uh, feel the flag of the season? Oh, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. 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 Of course, you know, it's bad. It's first impression. It is, sir. Mine. Uh, not if you judge it by the size of the present day jumbo. I mean, the jumbo is colossal, really, in size. But, I mean, for that time of the, in those 1940s, it was a big aircraft. They've been mucking about with it, Trevor. Definitely mucking about with it. Well, there's no lure for the start. Yeah, there is a lot of lower. Yeah. You remember the lure? You had to yes. pump it up and fill it up with water before we went. Water tank. Uh, all right. Or on this side, yeah. there were to be two machine guns that side, two that side. That's right. Yeah. Front turret, yeah. which used to roll back yeah. and forth. And then the next thing you got was the water. But it's, they've lowered it. I can't stand up here. Well, that's quite right. Where's the steps gone? There used to be steps going up to the pilot's place. That's right. There's a narrow, narrow the stairway. Steps. The, 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 there's the, the, there's the access hatch. to it, yes. Yeah, that's the difference. My word, yes. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Mm. Bar and all. The luxury that we uh, <laughs> <laughs> often thought about but never attained. <laughs> this was on top of the old bomb bay, you see. And oh, that's right, you yeah. can keep your engine covers on top of here and yes. all the rubbing and stuff. Well, uh, that just about here would be the where the mid upper turret would be. Yeah, the mid upper uh, and some upper, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and then down to the to look at the drip record and the rear turret. This used to be a bomb bay, as far as I recall. It's the best upholstered bomb bay I've ever seen. The one that used to be that way. Yes. That was the, the, the yeah. uh, no sink. Well, no, no, no sink. sink. We did have. Very and good cooking facilities. Yeah. Oh, that was <laughs> two, two primer stoves yeah. with uh, oven up to an oven either side. That's it, yes. And frying facilities on the top. Yeah. And down there was the bilges, and if the steak went in, you still had it. <laughs> bring it up, <laughs> yeah. Bring it out, shake it, put it back, and make it look nice and brown. The bloke who didn't like had it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>